I have traveled in my days, and I'm amazed I was talking to the Lord the other day. I'm amazed I've been so many places. I, my foot has walked on so many different grounds. I mean, I've been to Paris three times. I've been to Rome three times, <laughs> London, now China twice. On the Great Wall of China, Beijing, Shanghai, Hangzhou, I've, uh, South Korea, South Africa, Cape Town, Johannesburg, Latin America, and the whole of the USA and others. And I've surveyed. It's not a better apostle of land. I've been to Jerusalem too, by the way. I've been to Israel. I baptized in the Jordan River in Israel. Been to the Great Wall. I've been to Tel Aviv. I've been to Galilee, Capernaum. I've been to the Galilean Sea. I'm no novice at this. I, I, I've, God has privileged me to see the lands that he has created. Not just that, but I'm a former, I'm a former slave. Let me tell you what I mean by that. No, I was not born, <laughs> though you may think I'm pretty old, I ain't that old. I was not born before 1865, but let me tell you what I mean by that. You see, my grandfather, Grandpa, pa, father, uh, Grandpa Charlie, was born four years before slavery ended, two years before the Emancipation Proclamation, a little town called Panthers Ford, North Carolina, Bowie. Philadelphia's. He didn't know much about slavery, but as it ended, you have to remember in 1865, the Juneteenth event was that the people in Tulsa didn't know that, he, that Abraham Lincoln had offered the Emancipation Proclamation until two years after the offering of it. News didn't get around and slavery continued. And even in North Carolina in 1865, my grandfather still grew up, even though the Civil War had been lost by the Confederates, they still kept slaves. They, 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 just, they just did. Until finally, after Grant and Lincoln and Johnson sent troops into the South to finally break up. But my grandfather, probably by the time he was in his teens, was still a slave, even though the war had ended. Slavery didn't end because the war ended. And so he grew up a slave. And I walked with him in the fields where he, he and his parents were slaves. But not just that. The slave master of my grandfather, let's say the 25-year-old man that was 25 years old when slavery ended in 1865, lived be another, I don't know, 60 to 70 years old until 1930. He was a slave master at 25 years old when it ended. And even though, like Brown versus the Board of Education decision by Thurgood Marshall, that the Supreme Court ruled in 1954 that separate but equal was not constitutional, that all schools had to be integrated according to Brown versus Board of Education. That was in 1954. You've heard me say year after year, time after time, that even though North Carolina had been mandated by the Supreme Court to integrate all schools, I graduated from an all-colored high school. They still didn't integrate. They still didn't integrate. In 1954, I should have entered the seventh grade with white students. But the slave master, if you will, did not integrate. He didn't integrate until 1969 after much marching and fighting, he decided to go and integrate. So you have to realize, I see people like Van Jones or some of these Negro pre preachers talking in tongues and stinking up the place. Well, I see people like Liz Grandison of Black Lives Matter and some of these tranny freaks. You don't know nothing about me. I grew up a slave. I'm a former slave, that's right. I graduated from the slave position of schools, even though the courts had said I was a free man. The white people said, no, we're gonna. But I'm not bitter because of that. I'm glad I didn't go to the white school. Might have got it missed one of the white girls. 
It wouldn't be here today. Now, you don't know nothing about me. Don't call me a man. That, don't, don't say that I don't love the black man, that I'm against the black man, that I'm a hater. You don't know a damn thing about me. And those that you're listening to don't know nothing about the truth. That's why God sent me here. I have a pedigree. Not just that when I grew up in slave country, I walked and worked the fields where my grandfather and my great-grandfather picked cotton. I, as slaves, I picked cotton in the same fields as a sharecropper. And there was very little difference between the sharecropper and the slave. There was very little difference growing up in the South. Very little, you don't know nothing about me. You don't talk to me about I don't know no black man. And you don't know nobody who loves the black man, the Hamite, the way I love him. You don't know nobody. You don't know nobody? Don't you bring me none of these freaks, these transvestites, these butthole kissers. Don't bring me, don't you throw them up in my, and don't you throw none of these skin flattened preachers, hustlers, liars, ain't never been nowhere near God. Pastor of churches, don't bring them, bring these in my face, or none of these so-called Christians in my face. What about me? You'd never be able to walk in the shoes I walked in. I've forgotten more about how to be a man than a thousand black men who lived a thousand years collectively would not be able to measure up to the man I am. I've been shot at by the police. Tell me nothing about Breonna Taylor or Michael Brown. I've been shot at. I just outran the bullets. Police emptied his gun no more than 10 feet away from me. I'm here today. I've been beaten by the, don't you tell me nothing about police brutality. I was beaten by the police, kicked and stomped, cracked rib, broken teeth, concussion, put in Jackson Memorial Hospital in Miami, Florida for two weeks. Tell me nothing about no police brutality. You know a damn thing about it. Oh, you see what you seen on television. I've lived it. Talk to me about it. I don't know the black man. I ain't for the black man. I've been convicted of a crime I did not do. I graced some of the worst prisons in America, and yet I'm standing here today. You tell me one man you know that can stand with me. Bring me one. Bring me one. Bring me one. Go get one. Go get one. Go get one. You can't find them. Go get Al shop. The hell he can't stand with me. Go get a preacher. Go get him. Go get one. Go get one of these damn tongue-talking freaks. Go get him. Lying as he talks. Go get him. Go get him. Can't stand with me. I'm the Lord's servant. And by that, black ain't beautiful. Black is the most despised color in the universe for humans. It ain't beautiful. Black male. Black sheep. Black Monday. Black, 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 black. You're not black. You're a Hamite. You need to stop calling yourselves by that despised. Black lives matter. What a lie. What a lie. This is a bit of a news blog we do looking at spiritual wickedness in high places for the most part, making uh, some observations about it and giving people a biblical foundation to the way of interpreting rather than have uh, uh, Sean Hannity or Laura Ingram or Janine Pirro or Anderson Cooper or Rachel Maydow or Don Lemon, uh, Rush Limbaugh interpret what's going on in the world. You come to me and I'll tell you based on what the word of God says. They'll just give you their worldly sinful view. But the man will tell you what God has said whether to say yea or nay, whether to go or to stay. You'll be led by the word of Almighty God. Come to the Manning Report on a daily basis to interpret the spiritual wickedness in high places because there's plenty of it that's going on. And so I am he. I'm the Lord, sir. James David Righteous Rebel Manning. And I'm here to serve you with news and information.